everyone, welcome back. So we just had our video on this new class of machine learning problems, at least new to this channel, new to a lot of people called learning to rank. And so this is going to be the direct follow-up video on how do we actually do this? What are some techniques people use in order to rank a set of documents or results for a particular query or search? And so we're going to talk about those techniques here, starting from the most simplistic, moving to something a little bit more complicated, and there will be even more uh, things to talk about, but we'll leave them for future videos if there's any interest. So starting with what is the context, let's have some real data that we can play with in this video. Let's say that you're designing the world's first search engine for animal lovers. And to keep things really simple, let's just say that there's two possible searches people can put in. Everything we talk about today is obviously going to be able to scale. But for now, we'll just keep it simple to understand it. So people can either search for cats or they can search for dogs. And the next thing is that for if you search for cats, there's three possible documents that could match. Either this document on local animal shelters, which we'll call D1, caring for your cat, which we'll call D2, or cats the musical, which we'll call D3. And this cats query will be called Q1, which is query one. So we have these three possible results for this one query. And the last part of the story for this query is the labels. The labels in learning to rank have a very special place in my heart because they are interesting, prone to a lot of bias, but we'll touch on a little bit of that here. First of all, what are the labels? The labels are simply some kind of score, some kind of gauge about how relevant each of these documents is for this particular query. For our labels today, we'll be assuming they're either one, two, or three, with three being kind of signaling that this document is really, really relevant to this query and one meaning that it's not relevant at all. So we have these labels here, and the immediate question is where do I get those labels? The labels can come from many different places. Um, at the ideal level, they are given to you by your users. They're just hand labeled. Obviously, that takes a lot of resources, time, and money together. So most of the time, for any real learning to rank, they're gathered via some kind of automated system. For example, if you actually have the search engine running, you can use the clicks on these things as your labels. The more clicks something gets kind of says that it's more relevant, and the less clicks, the less relevant. There are issues with that. There's biases hidden in that, but we won't get into that. We'll just say that we have some kind of labels, and the higher the label, the more relevant this document is to the particular query in question. So we have labels 2, 3, and 1 here. And we have our second query, dogs, called Q2. This one happens to just have two documents that are relevant to it, possibly. We have who let the dogs out, and we have dental care for your dog, the first one being not relevant, and the other one being very relevant. So this is the data, so to speak, for our learning to rank problem. This is the raw data. Now, how do we go from this raw data and kind of uh, reformat it so that we can actually learn something? We can learn which documents should be ranked above others for a particular query. We're going to start with the most naive approach, which is called the pointwise method. So our first attempt is pointwise. The pointwise method basically just calls each training example. So each sample in your training set becomes a pair of query and document. So we have query one, document one, query one, document two, query one, document three. That's these three documents and this query. And then we have query two, document four, query two, document five and that's these two documents for that query. So we have five total training examples here. And the labels for each one are simply just the relevance. So that's coming straight from this labels column behind me here. We have two, three, one, one, and three. And so for each pair of these guys, we can derive whatever features we wanna derive. A couple that come to mind, for example, are if you're looking at document level features, maybe how many words are in the document, or how many times are pronouns mentioned in the document. If you're talking about query level features, then you could talk about how complex is the query. You can even have features that are kind of uh, intersecting between your query and your document, like how many times does the word cats actually appear in each of these documents. So there's lots of different features, not the main focus of this video, but those are the features you'll be using in the model. So now we're starting to see how this is structured more like a traditional machine learning problem that we're all very used to. You have some features for each of these guys, and you have a label here. All that's left to do, you can apply your favorite machine learning problem. For example, we can use a regression or a classification problem in this case. And you'll just get a function at the end of the day that takes in a query, takes in a document, uses all those features derived from those guys, and outputs some predicted score S hat. And so this seems like a good approach to the problem. Why don't we just do this if we can apply any machine learning algorithm that we've learned 
to this problem instead of having to derive some new math? Well, the pro is obviously that we can apply any existing model. You can just apply any model that takes in features and is able to predict some kind of score. We have tons of those at our disposal. But let's talk about why we don't use pointwise models for learning to rank typically. We are missing out on a very important element here. We are missing out on the fact that queries and documents have a very interesting relationship. For example, these three documents, in some sense, are tied to this query. And these two documents here are tied to this query. And by framing the training data in this sense, we lose all that information. We lose this information that this query and these three documents kind of belong together because we're just throwing them as examples in our data set. And so that's what we're trying to get at here is we're not accounting for the information within each result set. Because when you search for something, you're only really worried about the searches that are showing up right now. If you search for cats, you're very interested in these three results and the ordering of them. You're less worried about what could have showed up if you searched for dogs. So that's why this pointwise model is not strong for learning to rank, but it is a good starting point. The other issue here is that we need explicit scores. As we were talking about before, these labels could be a little bit tricky to grab accurately. And we need these labels in order to use the pointwise method, so that could be a limiting factor as well. Let's move on to the next step of this learning to rank, which is the pairwise method. So the pairwise method finally starts taking into account the fact that certain documents kind of belong or are tied to certain queries. And let's see how it does that. So this makes a very interesting use of training data. Instead of framing the training data like this, we frame the training data as queries and pairs of documents. So for example, if we're looking at query one, what are the total number of pairs of documents we could have? We could have D1, D2, we could have D1, D3, we could have D2, D3. And those are the exact three things you're seeing as the first three examples in this training data. And what are the labels in this case? The labels are binary in this case. And it's simply just a label that says whether D1 is ranked higher than D2, has a higher relevance. So we see that D1 is not ranked higher than D2. It has a label of 2. And this one has a label of 3, so it's less relevant than 3. Therefore, we put a 0 here. D1, D3, if we look at D1 and D3, this guy does have a higher relevance than this guy, so we give it a label of 1. And similarly for all these guys. So the fundamental difference the main fundamental difference of going from pointwise to pairwise is that first we're framing our training data not as just independent samples, but as pairs of things that are within the same query. So we're inherently starting to take into account these very interesting relationships between pairs of documents and specifically their relevances uh, versus each other for each query. So that's what we're seeing here. The next place this differs is that now we are going to explicitly try to achieve the goal of matching the following probability. So here's some notation, pi, this weird little greater than symbol, um, actually means that i is ranked higher than j. So in this context, i and j are some documents. And this term here means what's the probability that document i is ranked higher than document j for a particular query. And we're gonna model that as this very common form that we've seen before, the sigmoid form, of one over one plus e to the negative si hat minus sj hat. I think this deserves a little bit of explanation because you might be a little bit lost here, but what's going on explicitly is that we're still trying to learn some kind of function, just like here, which is going to take a query and a document and output some kind of score. That score is si, sj hat, and so on. But instead of treating these scores independently as we were doing in the pointwise model, we are going to be directly trying to optimize or match this probability. To be explicit here, for example, let's say that we're looking at document one and document two. We know that the label here is zero, so this probability should be very small because we want the probability that document one is more relevant than document two to be very small because in honesty, it's not. It has a label of zero. So we're going to try to find some kind of scoring function such that this probability for these two documents here is as close to zero as possible. Conversely, if we're looking at the document pair D1 and D3, we want this probability to be as high as possible because in fact, document one is actually more relevant than document three, has a label of one here. Therefore, we're going to try to find a scoring function such that this form becomes as close to one as possible. So I'm kind of masking some of the details here. I didn't wanna to go too deep into the math, but behind the scenes, we are trying to find a scoring function so that the scores that this thing outputs are gonna make these probabilities match as closely as possible 
to the actual truth between pairs of documents. And so this whole idea about certain documents being linked to a particular query, certain documents being more relevant to others given that query, is baked into this model, which is not true for the pointwise method. And so everything I said is kind of uh, coalesced into this blurb here. The pro here is obviously that we're directly learning to rank here. We're taking the relative rankings directly into account in the model. The other pro is that we don't need explicit labels here. For example, notice that our labels are just binary. So we don't need to know what the actual ratings here are. We just need to know whether one rating is higher than the other. That can be a big win in many situations where it's hard to get these labels. The con here is that, believe it or not, this model is still not fully informed. Even though we have begun to take into account these uh, relationships between documents in the same query, we're just doing it in a pairwise way. If we wanted to do this in an overly powerful way, in the best way possible, we would consider all of these documents for a particular query at the same time. And that, even though I ran out of room here, is the next step. So those are called listwise methods, and I've chosen not to talk about them here because we've already talked about a lot in that video. If you want to talk about listwise methods, let me know in the comments below, but they are one step further, and they basically take into account the entire set of documents at once, not in a pairwise fashion, but just all of them together. So the pro of them is that they do this in a more uh, theoretically sound way. The con is, of course, you might have guessed, they're very complex. You have to do them in an efficient way um, in order to do it at all. So hopefully you learned how we do learning to rank, starting from this naive pointwise method, talking about why it doesn't work, talking about this pairwise method, and moving beyond that. So if you learned something in this video, please like and subscribe for more just like this, and I'll catch you next time.